A great example of um, of this is when the Fed announced just a couple of days ago, there's an article in the Wall Street Journal, they're buying $120 billion worth of debt each month. <laughs> You know, I did the calculation and I realized that's about $11,200 per family or per, yeah. per household in the United States. And we just take it for granted. And, and most of the conventional world, the, the non-Bitcoiners, they take it for granted that, oh, well, the Fed is buying debt to support the system. But you see, you, you had two very different options. If you just gave everybody $11,200, you'd be, you'd be expanding the monetary supply but it would be expanded equally across all 120 million families. They would buy their own house, pay down their mortgage. <clears throat> they would have an, a credit, an asset, they would, you know, to their name. And you would have issued um, in an egalitarian fashion, um, whatever the number is, right? A trillion dollars worth of <laughs> assets to the people. But instead by buying the debt, the Fed is issuing the assets to the banks, <clears throat> the banks, and they're doing it to keep, quote unquote, the interest rate low. So the bank is then allowing five or 10 percent of those people to borrow money to buy a house to cost twice as much as it would otherwise cost and then owe all of their future cash flows to the bank. So we're basically leaving 60, 70, 80 percent of the population out, the 20 percent that get a quote unquote low interest rate, they, they, they get the gift of debt. They get the, the, the gift of being indebted uh, and having to buy the assets that they want, their house, at double the rate that they'd otherwise have to pay. That's the housing bubble. And the banks own everybody. And so you're really benefiting the bond traders. You're benefiting the banks. You're driving up the asset values of things that people need and you're leaving some large portion of people if you can't buy the something with debt right if you're a renter well how does that help you right maybe it trickles in some random way but it's a it's a gross distortion just give the people the money it, 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 the politicians have chosen to in debt everyone you know with the bankers holding the keys and strengthen the banks instead of choosing to abolish a trillion dollars of debt by issuing the cash directly, I might pay down my debt. Not, by the way, not only would I pay down the trillion dollars of debt, but I also would see all the assets that I need to buy deflate, right? The things that the, that the 300 million people need, they would get cheaper. If you think about the empowerment that Google provides someone by giving YouTube away, for free to billions of people and what you can do with YouTube. I, I, I think that's interesting, <clears throat> even though, I mean, you know, we see the we see the effect of Twitter and Facebook on empowerment, right? There are the, the critics of this and that and the other thing, even Amazon, they're all empowering in a way and they're all um, reshaping our world. And Bitcoin is that that technology, that uh, technology network that's spreading in order to allow people to store and channel pure monetary energy. <clears throat> we need the network in order to, we need the technology or the network in order to make a difference in the world. If all we had was the ideology, well, the ide ideology was Austrian economics. Mm -hmm. You saw how that worked out and in the 20th century. Sterile without <clears throat> a tool to carry it, basically. Right, so it's, it's like a pure math. You know, Isaac Newton writes Principia Mathematica. That's kind of interesting. On the other hand, when we use it to create an airplane, that's pretty tangible. When we use it to create a bridge, it's tangible. As long as it's just words on a piece of paper, it's theory. So what, what we've seen with Bitcoin is it's the first time we managed to engineer uh, an economic system that stores and channels pure monetary energy. And um, and it's the basis for a new economy, a Bitcoin economy. Uh, the economies it's competing against are, you know, the US dollar economy and then the, and all every other fiat economy. And, and it's, you know, it's displacing portions of these economies, the weaker ones that will displace faster, <clears throat> the stronger ones, it will displace slower 
and it serves as a deterrent, even if it doesn't replace a given economy, and it, it just serves as a deterrent against the worst behavior in that economy, it becomes a countervailing force, and it becomes a source of energy for, our, for those individuals, organizations, and agencies that adopt it as their base, uh, base energy source for their economy. And so we're, we're watching the world rewire itself and it's it's picking up steam but it, but to your point i mean how long will it take and how far will it uh, how will it spread it's it's hard to know how rapidly it spreads all we know is that it's a cleansing energy it's a clean it's like building an economy on clean monetary energy for the first time in human history and I guess just like Saifedean would say, you know, the world was better under a gold standard. It was the golden age and people ate better food and they created better buildings and their art and their music was better. And, you know, some people don't like him for saying that, you know, <laughs> there's little debates in the community, but I get what he's saying and I understand it. And uh, I don't disagree. Um, I think we see the same thing uh, circling the Bitcoin ecosystem, except it'll be stronger and better because because the eff effectiveness, you know, of a pure monetary energy network is in theory a million times better than the effectiveness of a gold energy network. I think um, as a Bitcoin, uh, a Bitcoin holder uh, support the, um, the security of the network and uh, the security of the software and, and look at different ways to do that. I think um, contribute to education, both both uh, institutional education, which I which I do in one fashion, and then consumer education. I have a big passion and interest in just educating the world. So, like the Sailor Academy is just giving away free education to everybody forever. Like if I could just give away a free college degree to everyone on Earth, I, I wouldn't mind creating a billion people with PhDs for free. Um, and I think it can be done technically. And so I'm interested in that. And, and to the extent that, um, that uh, Bitcoin, uh, like we're, we're actively working on Bitcoin educational products that we'll host and put in the open, uh, you know, we'll distribute via Creative Commons license. So we'll put it into open source and give away to the world. And I see there's education, all sorts of Bitcoin related education and Austrian economics education and other types of, of education that can be created and given away. Um, I'm excited about that.